Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the Greek Math Olympiad. So this is from the 2008 edition and it is question two. So our goal is to find all integers x such that x to the eighth plus two to the two to the x plus two is a prime. And so there's really only one hint for any of these problems that have to deal with show this crazy thing is a prime and that is factor it. And so generally there'll only be a couple of x values that make this thing a prime and it's quote unquote easy to show that you can factor it for all of the other x values. Obviously it's not that easy to show, it requires some tricks, but I mean that's typical for math contest type problems. So I would say maybe try this problem with this hint, we'll come back with a solution. So when I was first working on this problem, I had this idea to use Fermat's little theorem in order to show that this was congruent to zero mod some certain prime for all values of x after a certain point. And that's what I tried to do. So that didn't end up working, but I wanna show you the start of that approach because I think it might be illustrative. So let's go ahead and notice that if x equals one, then this is a prime. We're gonna get one plus two to the two plus two, which is two to the four, which is one plus 16, which is 17, a prime. And in fact, that's the only time that you ever get a prime. Now, again, I wanna use Fermat's little theorem, and which prime do I wanna consider this thing mod? Well, I'm gonna consider it mod five, and that's because eight is equal to four times two, and four is equal to five minus one. So let's go ahead and consider this equation modulo five. <clears throat> so what I wanna notice is that if x is not congruent to zero mod five, in other words, five does not divide x, then we have x to the eighth is equal to x to the fourth squared, but we know four is five minus one, so we know that that is congruent to one mod five, again by Fermat's little theorem. And then next, we have this two to the two to the x plus two is equal to, well, so that's gonna be four times two to the two to the x. But now if x is not congruent to zero mod five, and then, well, let's also introduce the case that x has to be strictly bigger than one, because we know the case when x is equal to one, well, we get a prime in that case. And then I want to notice that if x is bigger than one, this stuff up here is a multiple of four. Because it's going to be two to some number that's bigger than one. So that is clearly a multiple of four. And so that means this whole thing is congruent to four times one mod five. So in other words, it's congruent to four mod five. So now from here, what we can do is notice that that tells us that x to the eighth plus two to the two to the x plus two um, is congruent to zero mod five if x is not congruent to zero mod five. So in other words, this thing is a multiple of five in all of the cases when x is not a multiple of five. So obviously there is something still to check in this first try at the problem, and that is what if x is congruent to zero mod five. So in other words, what if x equals five y? Well, and then this other case that we've glossed over, which is what happens if x is a non-positive integer, like if it's zero, negative one, so on and so forth which we'll cover that case in the actual solution, but not for this like first try. You know, this doesn't really get you anywhere. And I should say that I think proving this last statement right here is harder than maybe the whole proof that um, we can use with factoring, like I said in the hint, but I think this is a nice illustration of Fermat's little theorem anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll look at the actual solution. 
Okay, so after looking at that first try at a solution, which, you know, wasn't actually a solution in all cases, but I think was pretty interesting, let's go ahead and look at the full solution. So I'm gonna break this up into cases. Maybe the cases that I'm gonna break this up into are x is less than or equal to negative one, x equals zero, x equals one, x is bigger than or equal to two. And then we'll further have to look at this x is bigger than or equal to two into some more subcases, but it actually won't be quite as bad as it's sounding right now. So I wanna point out that this x equals one case immediately gave us a prime when we checked it on the last board. So I'm not gonna check that again. Now let's look at this x equals zero case. So notice if, we, notice if we have x equals zero, then we're going to have zero plus two to the one plus two, but that's gonna be like eight or something. But notice that is not prime. In fact, you can pretty easily show that if you have any non-negative even integer for x, then you're gonna get a composite number here. So we've got not prime for x equals zero, we've got prime for x equals one. Now let's focus on the case when x is less than or equal to negative one. So maybe I'll underline this as pink, and then we'll put a pink box right here to say that we're gonna start that. So notice if x is less than or equal to negative one, then that means two to the x is going to be strictly less than one. And so in this case, we'll get that two to the x is actually one over a power of two, which means two to the two to the x is an even root of two. So i.e. it's the square root of two, the fourth root of two, the eighth root of two, and I guess I should say not just an even root, but a second power root of two, but we'll just write it like that. But then I think it's well known, and I don't think you have to prove this in the setting of um, a math contest, I think you can just state this, that none of these are rational numbers. So none are rational which tells us that this whole object right here is not rational because the rest of the parts of this object are rational. So here, notice that that means that x to the eighth plus two to the two to the x plus two is not a rational number. But what that tells us is it's not a natural number because you know the natural numbers are a subset of the rational numbers, but that means it's not prime because in order to talk about a number being prime, it's got to be a natural number in the first place. Okay, so now we've like taken care of this. So these are also not prime, kind of for a different reason than the purple box is not prime. Now I'll go ahead and clean up the board and we'll focus on the case when x is bigger than or equal to two. So now we're ready to finish this problem off. We're gonna look at the case when x is bigger than or equal to two. So I first wanna notice that if x is equal to two, then x to the eight is even, and two to the two to the x plus two is also even, which makes our whole thing even, which means this thing is not prime. So the x equals two case is also like fairly easy. So I'm gonna change this from the x equals bi bigger than or equal to two case to the x bigger than or equal to three case. Then I'll put a little box around that and then let's bring that down here and that's where we'll make the calculation for that case. Okay, so let's do it. This is where we're gonna do the tricky factoring. So I'm gonna take x to the eighth plus, I'm gonna take this two to the two x plus two and rewrite it as four times two to the two x, like that. And then I'm gonna write this as something which is like a difference of squares. So I can do that in the following way. This is gonna be x to the fourth plus two times two to the two x minus one quantity squared 
So notice if I square that, the first term squared gives us x to the eighth. The second term squared gives us this second term right here. Two times two is four, and then two to the two to the x minus one squared is two to the two to the x. And that is because, notice if we take two to the two to the x minus one and we square it, that's the same thing as two to the two to the x minus one plus two to the x minus one, but that's two to the two to the x. Powers of two um, have nice sum properties like that, which are pretty easy to show. So, but that's not quite the factorization because notice we have a cross term there, but we'll just subtract that cross term off. So we're gonna subtract twice x to the fourth times this next term. So that's gonna be four times x to the fourth times two to the two x minus one. Great. Now the next thing that I wanna notice is because I'm in the case when x is bigger than or equal to three, this guy right here is actually a perfect square. So what perfect square is it? Well, we can write that down pretty easily. That's gonna be two times x squared and then we're gonna have that multiplied by two to the two to the x minus two. Great, squared. So again, because of the nice squaring properties of powers of two, that's what you get for that guy squared right here. So maybe I'll put a little arrow, that's what we're getting there. But then we're having that subtracted off from this x to the fourth plus two times two to the x minus one squared. Now maybe I'll go ahead and call this term right here y, this term right here z. So now we have something of the form y squared minus z squared. And we know difference of differences of squares factor like y minus z times y plus z. But now we can check in the case that x is bigger than or equal to three, y minus z and y plus z are both bigger than one. And so maybe I'll leave that as like a little homework. Let's go ahead and check that y minus z is strictly bigger than one, and then y plus z, which is gonna be bigger than y minus z, so that is not really necessary to check, but might as well write this down. y plus one is also bigger than one which makes y squared minus z squared in this case a composite number, which means this x to the eighth plus four times two to the two to the x is a composite number when x is bigger than or equal to three. So in other words, we're not prime here either. So the only integer that gives us a prime out of this object is x equals one. And that's a good place to stop.